You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Da 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 like who goes where down? are we who goes Who's up <laughs> oh, disney movie tinkerbell tinkerbell tinkerbell's a fairy all right there it is we're just keeping that we're not doing a second take i mean why do a second take when the first one was perfect <laughs> as the first take literally also. everyone listened to that and went wow why are they still podcasting why is my why are my ears bleeding they, what should, have, they should make up an acapella group <laughs> this guy should definitely have a podcast where that they would sing. be a wild idea because wild development is almost here what's up everybody you're watching slash listening to the command zone podcast i'm one of your hosts today jimmy wong how is it it's josh lee kwai precon time you think when they're always like i wish jimmy and josh would do an episode together that that's what they have in mind right there <laughs> the, the singing there's at least maybe three people that will comment that like i love the singing 10 people that i think i hate the singing but i'm not going to comment because that's just kind of because i'm not mean and then, and then one person that will be like why are they singing oh there's 50 people that are gonna be like what is that singing what are they doing <laughs> but will they comment it's a tradition everybody we're kind of we're like priced into it at this point yeah, yeah. all right yeah. so wilds of eldrain it's almost here it's right around the corner there are two Precon Commander decks in nice. the set, and today we are revealing one of them, and it's called Fey Dominion. Sweet. <laughs> so it's the blue-black deck. Obviously, it's themed around fairies. Yep. Uh, and we're going to do what we do for all of our deck reveal episodes. We're going to reveal all the new cards in the product, and then we're going to crunch the numbers, talk about the reprint value, and go through the entire deck list. But before we get into it, we got to talk about our sponsors, cardkingdom.com slash command. Do you want to get this deck? You well, do. hey, you can pre-order it. You can buy it when it comes out. You can get the singles from it by going to cardkingdom.com slash command. Pick up what you need from their awesome, huge inventory. And the best part is if you are building a bland, brand new, I was like bland new, and your deck will not be bland. It's not bland, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be filled with sweet foils and other cool cards from cardkingdom.com slash command. Your blue, black fairies deck, whatever it deck it is, when you build it, you can order all the cards at once. They arrive at your doorstop in one single package goes straight from card to sleeve and you are ready to play just like that so not only is the convenience an amazing factor they've also got a great inventory to select from and you're just supporting a great company in cardkingdom.com slash command that's our affiliate link you're gonna buy magic cards anyway so why not help out the show and help out your collection at the same time yeah and of course once you get those cards you want to protect them ultrapro.com slash command that is the game accessories brand that jimmy and i trust our own collections to ultra pro is also going to have all of the ip usage from wilds of eldrain so they oh, can yeah. put the actual art from the set onto the playmats the sleeves the deck boxes so not only are you protecting all of your valuable game pieces you're also making your battlefield look really really cool again ultrapro.com slash command another perk of going to their website is they have all kinds of awesome deals all the time and discounts and things like that i we always recommend signing up for the newsletter yeah. because it will let you know when those deals happen. And uh, they also have limited secret layer style drops and things like that so that you can keep up to date. Sometimes there's cool playmats come out, but they're only available for a limited time. So yeah. ultrabro.com slash command. That is the place to go to protect your cards and get all the accessories that are going to protect your game the pieces. The sweet, sweet game pieces. And yep. the last way to directly support the show is at patreon.com slash command zone. Uh, it's we love our patrons every single patron gets access to our discord where we can chat with them they can ask us questions ask rachel questions members of the staff questions higher tiers get even cooler stuff like exclusive content turn talks after each extra turns actually everyone also gets access to game nights and extra turns a day early this is just a small sampling of the cool things you can find over at patreon.com slash command zone well there is a very cool thing going on right this is now. the big one yeah and this is a perk that all patrons get and it's okay to sign up for the patreon just to participate we are currently holding auditions to be on game nights yeah our the fan, fan episode yeah our fan episode just came out it was a really fun one it's fun every single year we fly two fans to la to hang out with the command zone team jimmy and myself and then to compete for commander glory and get knighted on game nights if you would like a chance at that just go on over to patreon.com slash command zone sign up at any tier level and you are eligible to audition yeah and all those details and links always of course will be in the show notes about how to audition and the instructions about it but we also shout out one lucky patron every mm -hmm. single week they may not be on game nights but they are on this episode. I mean, this person could <laughs> get on Game Nights of the Audition. That's right. This, so this episode <laughs> is dedicated, dedicated to Daniel Ortega. Ortega. Daniel. Sorry we butchered that opening song. You are you rock. <laughs> I am sorry about the song. Okay, let's get into this Fade Dominion Wilds of Eldrain pre-con deck reveal. As with all our deck reveal videos, we're not going to go into a lot of 
card evaluation. We're mostly just going to show off what is here so that you know. Yep. We will be doing, like we always do, uh, budget upgrade guides for both of these precon decks from Wilds of Eldrain in the future. So if you're looking you know, to get the deck and figure out, you know, how do I upgrade or whatever, we will have videos for that and later. But this one is just about what's there. What yeah. are you going to get? Yeah. Okay. So the first spiciest new thing, obviously, are the new cards. Uh, the precons have 10 new cards each, and two of them are legendary creatures. This is actually kind of like the pattern of those decks that came out, remember, like a couple of years ago when they started to do the decks with yeah, each set. Yeah, the set decks is what we Yeah, the set decks. Time. So these are very similar to that. There are two new legendary creatures, and these are the new commanders. So let's read the first one, which is the one on the box. The lead singer, we like to say. It's Tegwil, Duke of Splendor. Mm. Did I pronounce that right? I think so. Okay. One, a blue and a black for a 2-3 legendary creature, Fairy Noble. Has flying and death touch. Other fairies you control get plus one, plus one. Nice. And whenever another fairy you control dies, you draw a card and you lose one life. Wow. So it's an aristocracy fairy. Yeah, and you're drawing a card, by the way. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty nice there. Obviously, a lot of the cards that say text like this sometimes will be like, do this only once each turn. Yeah. But this just says any fairy, including... If you get a let out, it's just like... Tokens good. as well. So this seems pretty powerful. Just a three-man or commander as well is pretty good. Yeah, this seems like it's going to belong in any fairy deck if it's not the headliner of that deck. Totally. And it also seems like a pretty strong headliner. Let's see what the backup uh, commander is, though. Yeah. It's a returning character, actually. It's Alela, Cunning Conqueror. And this Alela is two a blue and a black for a 2-4 legendary creature, Fairy Warlock. Has flying. And it says, whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, create a 1-1 black fairy rogue creature token with flying. And whenever one or more fairies you control deal combat damage to a player, goad target creature that player controls. Mm, interesting. So that you choose a creature on their, their battlefield that has to attack and it cannot attack you their next turn. Yeah, so spoiler alert, this is the commander that I built around for the Wilds of Eldraine episode of Game Nights, Ooh, which is nice. coming up soon. Um, this is a classic payoff for instant speed stuff kind of in the mold yeah. of like nimrus or something like that yep um, but it also has that goad ability so you really get to take advantage of the one ones that you're creating yeah and by the time it gets back to your turn they'll all basically be able to attack and you get to do it once each turn so optimally if you're casting a lot of like cantrips and stuff you yeah. can make three fairies swing with them go to a bunch of stuff no one's coming after you keep going Seems pretty good. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Uh, but Tegwil is also pretty sweet. You just draw cards whenever fairies die. And I like that it says non, doesn't say non-token on there either. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I think, you know, the deck, it's going to be interesting because every time you look at a precon and you're figuring out which commander you want to play as the commander out of the box, the default is the one on the front of the box. But yeah. every once in a while, we do see that it's actually a little bit more powerful to play the backup. The backup, yeah. Even straight out of the box with no changes. And Layla could contend for that top spot. It sort of depends on how many instants I think are in the deck. Yeah. Card draw is hard to beat, though, especially yeah. on a commander. All right, those are the two new commanders. There are eight new cards that are not the commanders in the deck. So we're going to go through those right now. The first one is called Archmage of Echoes. 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 <laughs> well, that, I should have waited longer because Echoes, <laughs> they get further in between. Oh, right? man, your Echoes were not realistic, yeah. Jimmy. Fired. All right. Fired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Archmage of Echoes. Echoes. <laughs> Is four and a blue for a four four Echoes. creature fairy wizard. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Okay. Four and a blue for a four four fairy wizard has flying in ward two. Whenever you cast a fairy or wizard. Echoes. <laughs> Still good. Wow, this is a huge oh, we're in the wow, cavern. We're in a very here. big room. Whenever you cast a fairy, I felt like I said whenever you cast a fairy. Oh. <laughs> whenever you cast a fairy okay. or wizard permanent spell, copy it. The copy becomes a token. Wow. All right. That seems pretty sweet. Pretty good. Yeah. Obviously, you can't do this with a commander because of the legend rule, but... Uh, having... I mean, you can still do it. You'll just have to yeah, sack, yeah, sack one, one of them. them. But if it has an ETB, it's still worth it. Yeah. Would Tegwo trigger <laughs> because it's another fairy? <laughs> I think so, right? Yeah, because it's technically... And it dies. Yeah, both enter. Yeah, yeah interesting. Yeah, you sack. Um, yeah, that's pretty powerful. Obviously, copying anything is great, and it's a permanent for fairies, not just fairies, wizards. Yeah, that... the. the the, the fact that it's wizards gives it more usage outside of just fairy decks. So yeah, yeah and there are a lot more wizards. I, there I are wizards like, that yeah. do ton. Like there's ones that bounce spells, copy spells. Oh, there's a lot nuts. of wizards. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Next up, we got Blightwing Bandit. Three in the black for a two-two flying death touch fairy rogue. When you, whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, look at the top card of that player's library, then exile it face down. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled, and mana of any type can be spent to cast it. 
Oh, cool. so you in, uh, impulsive draw off the top of your opponent's library. And you can play lands here, which is pretty important. Yeah. Um, and you have to spend mana, so I believe you have to obey timing restrictions in this case. But pretty but good. It's in the mold of a Layla a little bit, and then this is another payoff for instant speed shenanigans, yeah. right? Yeah. All right, the next one is Fairy Blade Crafter. Two in a black for a 2-2 two, two Fairy Rogue with flying. Whenever one or more fairies you control deal combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on Fairy Blade Crafter. When Fairy B Blade Crafter dies, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where X is its power. Okay, so this pair is better with Tegwill here, obviously. You uh, it's pretty good with Layla too because... Yeah, the goading and the combat damage. Yeah. It's whenever one or more fairies you control deal combat damage to a player. So if you hit three, three players, players, it would get three counters. But it wouldn't matter how much you hit them for or how many creatures you hit yeah, one for. Yeah, 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 yeah. But okay. still. Well, yeah, same text as Alayla is whenever one or more fairies deal combat damage to a player. Yep. Uh, all right, next up we have Malleable Imposter. You can probably guess what this card does already. Three and a blue for a zero, zero fairy shapeshifter with flash, ooh, and flying. You may have malleable imposter enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature an opponent controls, except it's a fairy shapeshifter in addition to its other types, and it has flying. So that's cool. Clones are almost always at four mana, and this time it has flash and flying on it. Poor regular old clone. <laughs> Doesn't have flash, doesn't have yeah, flying. Yeah, it's kind of been priced out at this point. <laughs> it can copy your own stuff. This yeah, can only do opponents, but stuff. still. <laughs> flash flying, I mean, that's big. There's some massive ground creatures in Commander that if you become into a flyer, it's like, imagine copying like an Atali. Oh you my want. gosh. <laughs> you get yeah, the ETB. You, yeah, <laughs> they play their Atali and they're like, cool, on my next turn, I'll be able to use it. And you're like, cool, on my this turn, I'm going to do it though, because on the end step, I make my Atali. Yeah, my Atali. Yeah. Can't flip that one, but. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, how about original Atali? Yeah. Oh, even better. Uh, they're all good. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to compare. Okay. Neither Atali is in this deck because there's no red in this deck. I just want to be clear <laughs> about that. The next card is Misleading Signpost. Didn't mean to mislead you about yeah. Atali. Yeah. Two and a blue for an artifact. Has flash. I'm sensing a flash sub-theme, which is cool. Yep. When Misleading Signpost enters the battlefield during the Declare Attacker step, Whoa. you may reselect which player or permanent target attacking creature is attacking. And then uh, you can also tap it for a blue. So it is a three-mana rock with flash that messes up combat when it comes in. Cool. And you're going to be able to... Ideally, you're doing this before it gets back to your turn, so then you can tap it. Yeah. Wait, no, it's... Yeah, it's an artifact, actually. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you could tap it anyway, but it's just when it enters the battlefield during the declare attacker step. Right. So you, you don't want to play it necessarily on your turn and tap it right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a, you know mess up combat in an interesting way. You get attacked and you're like, never mind, you're attacking them. Yeah, and it says attacking creature or per, uh, uh, whatever it's uh, attacking or a permanent it could be attacking. So I'm guessing oh, they mean... get like, it off your Planeswalker? Yeah, Planeswalker or Battles. Oh, Battles case. too, yeah. yeah. So that's a permanent now, so... Very cool. Interesting, okay. Uh, that's sweet. That's kind of like Blue's version of uh, that mirror. The Forsaken Mirror. Curse Mirror. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, Nettling Nuisance. By the way, this deck doesn't have red. <laughs> the mirror's not in there either. The mirror's not in there, yeah. Nettling Nuisance, two in the black for a 3-1 with flying, fairy rogue. Whenever one or more fairies you control deal combat damage to a player, that player creates a 4-2 red, red <laughs> pirate creature token with this creature can't block, and the token is goaded for the rest of the game. That's kind of cool. So one or more fairies to a player. So that's the same text as Blade Crafter yep. and Alayla. So you can hit three people with fairies. Make three four twos on each of their That are all goaded. They're all goaded for the rest of the game. Yeah. That's really good until it's 1v1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, once it's 1v1, the goaded thing attacks another pl a player other than you if able. Yeah. But if it's 1v1, it's not able, so it can therefore attack you. Yeah. But still, pretty cool. That is pretty cool. All right. There's two to go. The next one is Shadow Puppeteers. Six and a blue, seven mana hmm. for a four-four fairy wizard with flying and ward two. When Shadow Puppeteers enters the battlefield, create two one-one black fairy rogue creature tokens with flying. Whenever a creature you control with flying attacks, you may have it become a red dragon with base power and toughness four-four. In addition to its other types, uh, colors and types until end of turn. Well, wow. any creature with flying attacking. So yeah, so all your fairies, I guess, in this deck, wow. just become four, four fours fours. when they attack. This deck almost wants red to be red for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> it's doing red things. Two in a row things that it's like, well, let, we're going to either turn things into a red creature or make red creatures. So this is like seven mana for technically three creatures because you get two one ones. And then it is a finisher, right? Because if you have like a bitter blossom, all your one ones become four fours when they attack now. You kind of really get three four fours. I mean, it's only on attack. So yeah. on defense, they're not four fours. But the two one ones this makes will become four fours when they attack 
next turn or this turn if you have haste or something. Yeah. Yeah. I feel but like you just slam that swing. Swing with everything. And and it's win. more like a crater hoof. Than yeah, 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 yeah. Next up, Tegwill's Scouring. So Tegwill referencing the lead commander here. Four black black for a sorcery. You can you may cast Tegwill's Scouring as though it had flash by tapping three untapped creatures you control with flying in addition to paying its other costs. So it's still six mana, but if you tap three fairies or creatures with flying, then you can cast with flash. It says destroy all creatures and create three 1-1 one, one black fairy rogue creature tokens with flying. Okay. All right. So kind of a selective board wipe. It's cool that it has the flash ability on it. And normally it's like, oh, why are you casting the board wipe if you have to? And it's like, kind of sucks you have to tap down your creatures to cast. Because they're going to die. But everything's going to die anyway. So, and you get three one ones afterwards. This seems good with Tegwell, but also good with the Layla because you might just incidentally have these tokens that you've created along yeah, the yeah. way. And you can get this out at flash speed. Yeah, uh, any board wipe at flash speed is very powerful because it flips the script on how, on what's yeah. sort of uh, the advantage and disadvantage of board wipes are. The advantage is you get rid of all the stuff and you can like 10 for one, but the disadvantage is you usually spend so much mana on the board wipe that everyone else is repopulating first, so you're still behind by the time it gets back to your turn. Yeah. This one can flip that script and say, well, you do it on the end step before your turn. You end up with three fairies, but also you're the one untapping and populating, repopulating the board before first. everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, and that I find to be... It, it makes a big difference on whether a board wipe is playable or not. Yeah, yeah. Six mana obviously is a lot for a, a lot. board wipe, but doing it at instant speed and then going into Shadow Puppeteers next and then swinging with <laughs> three, four, fours. There you go. That's pretty good. And yeah, you're like, there. what's my board will look like? I've got uh, a four, four and four one, one ones. ones that become four, fours when they attack. Yeah, yeah. And you That's can't, and everyone's like, okay, I got to rebuild. And you're like, cool, I'm going to just hit you again. Yeah, you're probably dead on the second swing. Right? Yeah, that's a lot yeah. of damage. It's got Ward 2 as well. Yeah. Puppeteers with Ward. And Ward 2 is basically hexproof sometimes. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Yeah, it feels so bad to target it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so those are the 10 new cards in the deck. Of course, next up, we are going to be talking about the reprint value breakdown. How uh, much value is in here? What the big reprints are? Are we more happy with this deck than we were with the Commander Masters stuff? Oh, I hope so. Yeah, I, I hope so, so as well. That's a big question. We haven't turned the page yet, and we're not going to because we're going to take a quick break, hear a message from our sponsors. But when we can't come back, we will answer that question. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Josh, do you know where we put the... What is going on here? How's it? How's it? Why is everyone dressed like you? I know, isn't it great? I got tired of going to a dozen different websites looking for new employees, but now with my Quai guys, I can be everywhere all at once. Why don't you just use Indeed, the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. They have powerful tools that streamline the hiring process and save you a ton of time. Like Indeed's hiring platform, where all the hard work is done for you. They match you with quality candidates the moment you sponsor a post, and only ones whose resumes meet your job description. In fact, Indeed delivers four times more hires than all other job sites combined. That is impressive, but could we hire more Joshes? I think we have enough. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash command zone. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash command zone. Just go to Indeed.com slash command zone and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Again, that's Indeed.com slash command zone. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. How's it, everybody? Working hard or hardly working? Hello, Josh. You're looking beachy. Yeah, it's vacation time. Later, suckers. Um, you do know you're still here, right? Oh, yeah, I'm way too busy to have a real vacation. But with my Raycon wireless earbuds, I can take a vacation right here in the office. I've got my summer vibes playlist and a brand new audiobook, and Raycons are the best way to listen to all of it. Their custom gel tips are super comfortable. The battery life lasts me all day, and they even have noise isolation mode, which I can activate with simple tap functions. So none of you can disturb me while I'm on my mind beach sipping my mind drinks. Plus, Raycons come at half the price of other premium brands, so picking up a new pair is way cheaper than, for instance, buying plane tickets to Barcelona. Wait, you were just in Barcelona. That was work. That's different. This is work. Uh, I'm sorry. I cannot hear you. Raycation. Create your own soundtrack with Raycon. Right now, Command Zone listeners can get 15% off their Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash command. That's buyraycon.com slash command to save 15% on Raycons. Again, buyraycon.com slash command. 
You browsing for some new tech? Yeah, I'm building T-Mount and Architect. Ooh, how about Zergo and Ojitai? Did you just drag and drop that card image directly into your deck? Yep, with Architect, you can drag and drop card images from EDH Rec or Scryfall directly into the deck list. No typing required. That is so cool. Ooh, okay, check this out. I'm gonna drag and drop Dragon Storm into the deck, and then boom, I'm gonna drop a bunch of dragons on the battlefield. A nine drop, huh? Seems ambitious. It was just for the pun. Architect is the best place to browse, brew, and playtest commander decks. Just go to architect.com slash command zone to get started. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T dot com slash command zone. All right, we are back, uh, and we're going to talk about the deck stat breakdown first before we get into the reprint value. But wait, do you hear that, Josh? Echo. <laughs> wow, one more, huh? Echoes, echoes. It's still echoing. Okay, so let's talk about the... do 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 Stats. 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 Fey Dominion deck. So, going down the list of the most important parts of each deck, we have nine pieces of ramp. Very cool. 13 pieces of card draw. 12 pieces of targeted interaction. Wow. So, one for one removal, bounce, whatever it might be. Four board wipes. We just talked about one of them as a brand new card. And 39 lands. We felt the need to put that on the stat sheet because it is abnormal. That's, that's a lot. That's f almost 40 cards. That's well, that's a lot of the deck. Seems high, especially you wouldn't expect a fairies deck to require an extra amount of mana, right? Yeah. Like 39, when you get near 40 lands, you're thinking this is a landfall deck or it's a deck with a higher curve so yeah, that yeah. you can little afford to miss your land drops. So yeah, that was a little bit of an eyebrow raiser, I thought, was, oh, 39, oh, 37, 36 feels like it's fine. And yeah. that might tell you, like, those might be some free cuts when you're upgrading the deck. Yeah, definitely, which yeah. is awesome. Nine ramps, slightly low. Everything else looks right. Maybe even a little high on the board wipes, right? Yeah, I would say high on the targeted interaction. 12 pieces of targeted interaction is, is a lot. I like a lot that, about that many these days. Yeah, it's true. It's interesting because blue-black is definitely not your ramp colors. Yeah. And it's it's I would think if you're looking at this deck, and I would just replace some lands with probably with like some rocks or whatever it is. Yeah, take out two to three lands, put in two to three rocks, and take out a board wipe or two, and you, you've got a couple more synergy pieces. And those are like free upgrades. Um, yeah. Of course, what to upgrade it with? Well, we're going to hold off on that because we're talking about that in another uh, video. Yeah, talking about synergy pieces, though, let's look at the rest of the stats. All right, so there are 24 fairies in the deck. Okay. Seems a little low. There are probably cards that create fairies, like Alayla. Yeah, yeah. Which, well, there's also, like, Misleading Signpost and Shadow... Well, Shadow Puppeteers makes fairies, but Tegwell Scouring makes fairies. Yeah, exactly. So, because that... We usually like to see closer to around 30 of a thing if they, we're themed around that thing, but yeah. I think there are probably some cards that aren't technically fairies that make fairies. Yep. Um, there are 25 instant speed things. Oh, okay. So, that's sort of leaning towards Alayla because that's the payoff for doing things at instant speed if there was a question of whether to, to run Tegwell or Alayla and as the commander. And Flash, by the way. Yeah. Because some of the fairies have flash and and layla cares about casting your first spell not instant specifically right uh there are only three instance matter cards so cards that are payoffs for casting things at flash speed mm -hmm. and that's pretty low and i think that to me is the major signpost that kind of tells you tegwell is probably who you want to run right out of the box just because yeah layla's cool and there is a decent amount of instant speed stuff but there's not you're not going to be able to like double up the amount of value you're getting yeah for casting things on other players turns uh just because the deck doesn't have that sub theme like filled out that much yep yep there are six token creators so okay. there you go i think we can assume there are about 30 fa fairy makers then in the deck there you go yeah yeah that makes sense and there are four anthem effects so four ways to sort of pump all your fairies which seems in a little bit low including tag will does, so, does take will count yeah yeah because it's plus one plus one that's like a lord effect um i guess the other anthem effects would be that fl the Shadow Puppeteers kind of counts as one. But yeah, it is a little low because I think the way you win a game with this deck is by hitting people in the air for a yeah. lot. And hitting everyone for one a bunch of times isn't going to do it. Yeah, exactly. So you do really want to pump your fairies at a certain point and it'd be nice to be able to do that. So w that might be a little low. Yep. Uh, so just going over the overall deck contents here, there are 10 new cards, five main set cards. So remember that in these pre-cons, and it's a little confusing... The new cards are technically stuff that, like, is available only in the Commander products. Yeah, you can't open it in a regular draft in a or dra set booster. Yeah, sometimes oh, you can wait, get Oh, wait, no, you can set, get set boosters, yeah, yeah, yeah. But not in draft. Um, then main set cards, which are technically reprints in the pre-con deck, but if they're from Wilds of Eldraine, there are five of those. Yep. So those are kind of new cards as well, but less so new yeah. cards. Yeah, they're not officially new cards. Yeah, and they weren't and designed they're not, like, for technically reprints. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. It's just a little middle ground. Anyway, uh, there are 60 reprints okay. in the deck. It, traditionally what we would call reprints. And then there are 25 basic lands. So 25 of those 39 lands are basic, which is 
I always say it's disappointing when there's a lot of basics because I, you know, it's nice to us or it's nice for us to get our reprint value up in these yeah. decks. And when there's that many basics, then each other card has to carry a lot more of the reprint value to sort of get where we want to be. So I'm already a little bit worried yeah. that our reprint value is going to be low again. There you go. I guess we should segue into the reprint value now. Do do do. So when we take the reprint value, what we do is we take it at the time that we record the episode because obviously when the deck comes out, people see the cards. It changes what their price might be, if especially for new reprints and all that stuff so the reprint value we're going to take from the time of recording which is and, before the reprints are known yeah and we can't actually do the value of the new cards so keep in mind that this is just reprint value because we also don't know what value the new cards will hold and that includes the main set cards that's why we called out those five main set cards because yeah. again wilds of eldraine at the time of this recording the full set is not fully revealed so there's no read on the price of any cards from the set at all including the main set and the new cards so yeah. and it can go up or down you never know yeah exactly especially those five main uh main set cards if they have any value at all it would change this number the new for cards sure. tend to even out over time and so yeah are accounted for in the number so anyway all of this is a a long way to say oh i guess we should also say well, another thing we aren't sure of at the moment is what the cost of these decks are going to be oh right they're not we don't think at the moment because there's no msrp anymore wizards doesn't tell us how much you're supposed to sell this stuff for because there's no MSRP, uh, but what we're seeing right now on you know various online sites is uh, we think they're going to be around forty bucks like normal ones, not eighty bucks like Ugh, Commander, Commander Masters. Masters. Yeah, gross. So I hope that remains true. Historically, they've been around that, yeah. which actually made the original precons like a really good value. I think. Yeah, so. for sure. Okay, so the reprint value for this deck is drum roll, please, a hundred and seven dollars and forty cents. All right. Ka-ching. Pretty good. Yeah. Um, so let's take a look at other reprint precons so you can sort of get an idea of the average reprint value. So uh, let's say Baldur's Gate, the precons they made for that, their reprint value on average was about 104, so right around the same amount. Brothers War, those sweet precons with the old frames, that actually value was 95 at the time of recording the episode. All will be one. Reprint value, again, up above 100 at 101. And March of the Machine, so these are all the recent sets, the reprint value is about 97 bucks. Yeah, and you can see, like, we broke it down to sort of bang for your buck. Yeah. Baldur's Gate was, you get $2.60 worth of cards for your $1 paid. March of the Machine was $2.40 of cards for mm-hmm. your $1 paid. Fade Dominion is $2.68 for each $1 paid at that one oh seven forty mark. And I think... The old rubric we used to use, and it's still true, is anything that's above $100 is quite good. Yeah, yeah, in general. As and long as the price of the precon is not higher than what it has been in the past. Yeah, exactly. At this price point, at around $40, anything above $100 worth of reprint value is quite good. And anything that's like 85 or below is on the bad side. And then anything between 85 and 100 is just kind of normal, average. Yeah. So I, I think we're looking at a reprint value that is above average. Not insane. We've seen some there in the 120s. And those are like, holy crap. But still, on the very good side. Yeah, and a, a lot of the reprint value, too, that isn't numbers-based is going to be what's in the deck and whether or not you, if you're going to disassemble it or put those cards elsewhere to good use, right? So sometimes it can, the reprint value can also just sort of hide the fact that, like, actually, there's like five or six staples in here that I just needed more of if you're going to take the deck apart, so. This is nice to see after Commander Masters, I got to say. At least the yeah. reprint value here is, like... It's good. We, we can with wholeheartedly say, like, this feels like a good deal. Yeah, yeah. And again, who even knows if the team that worked on Commander Masters had anything to do with this or the prior sets, right? Like, the way that it's all Well, the team that works on it doesn't even always have anything to say about pricing. Usually yeah, it doesn't, totally. so who knows what happened. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot, <laughs> a lot that goes on behind the scenes, obviously. Okay, so let's talk about the notable reprints from the deck, and we're just going to call out the cards that are $5 or more. And just looking at the list before we call it the cards, I'm very happy with this list. I would much rather see our reprint value be high because there are a few high ticket items yeah, totally. than a bunch of like mid or low ticket items. Yeah, because maybe those prices actually aren't accurate. And right. if you want a $2 card, it doesn't feel that bad to go out and buy it. But a $20 card is just like a, a lot of people I understand is just like, it is just not worth it to buy any card for $20. Yeah. So it's nice when a... a Precon like this gives you a thing you wouldn't n- normally get, where it's yeah. like, eh, if I wanted that $2 card, I could have got the $2 card, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we're going to start off with a card that is $22 at the time of this wow. recording. Yeah. It's a very good card, though. It's yep. a board wipe. It's Kindred Dominance, especially in typal decks. Five black, black sorcery. Choose a creature type. Destroy all creatures that aren't of the chosen type. Oh, it's going to be so good in this deck. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to choose Wizards. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a bad idea. Yeah, dang it. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is one of those ones. I cast this. I destroy everything 
everything but my creatures, and then I kill everyone. Yeah, no, or at, or least, at least one person. One person. Yeah. <laughs> the next card's another kind of underrated card, I believe. I play this quite a bit. It's, it's really good. Yeah, it's Brazen Borrower. It's $12 at the time of this recording. So he's playing a lot of the more standard D formats, right? Yeah, and I think it's underplayed in Commander, but it's very good because it's dual usage. It's one blue blue for a 3-1 uh, flyer with flash. Uh, but it says Brazen Borrower can block only creatures with flying. However, it has an adventure side, which is called Petty Theft, which is one in blue for an instant return target non-land permanent in opponent controls to its owner's hand. Great. So you can cast this as a bounce spell and then pay the three to bring it in as its flying creature side. And at flash speed. So yeah. you could very early on one in the blue bounce something and then just have it sit there on an adventure for the rest of the game until you absolutely need that sweet 3-1 flyer. Yeah, and with you know the commander, it's actually a 4-2 hits pretty hard if a Layla is the commander then you're making a fairy you're goading something probably yeah. an extra th it's really good with a Layla actually because you flash this in oh you can both play for a petty theft yep and then you can flash in later again so you get two fairies off it and it's the third fairy and now you are attacking all three players and goading their things wow. with just with this one card yeah, yeah seems great yeah you're right I think this is pretty underrated yeah at least for commander uh, this next one is not underrated and is maybe one of the most nuisancey type cards to ever see at the other end of the table. It's Glenelendra Archmage, Archmage, three in the blue for a two-two flyer, uh, and it has pay a blue, sacrifice Glenelendra, a uh, counter target non-creature spell. But it also has persist, which means it comes back to the battlefield. If it didn't have any minus one minus one counters on it, it puts one on there, so it becomes a one-one. And again, you can pay a blue and sack it to tar counter a target non-creature spell. Now this was nine dollars and fifty cents at the time of this recording, almost ten bucks. Yeah, this is one of the his sort of historical nuisance cards. I agree with you in the format. Both of us have been on both sides yep. of just being locked out of games because of Glenelendra. Because the thing is, if you can blink Glenelendra, oh, get gosh. rid of that counter in some other way, you're back you can to just, this, yeah. Yeah, you can just <laughs> counter stuff forever. They had often people play Glenelendra and you would look at the amount of blue mana that you got and you're like, oh, we can't do anything. Yeah, you have to get through two instances of the counter, basically. Yeah, and that's if they don't have a ghostly flicker or any other little trickery going on. Yeah, even removing it feels bad, because it's yeah. like, cool, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to counter that. I just remove it, and it's coming back. Yeah. So what are you going to do now? Yeah, and if you path it, then they you won't exile it because they They'll will sack, sack it. it to the yeah. Yeah, counter clause. Yeah, one of the great cards. Do you know, I got to say this, Yeah. The name of that character is not Glenelendra. Yeah, I thought it was, and you would think, oh, that's a legendary creature named Glenelendra. Yeah. No, nope, Glenelendra is like a place or a something. Place. Yeah. yeah. So it's the Archmage or Archmage of that specific thing, which it's is Glenelendra. The Glendale Archmage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Got it. Now I will never make that mistake again. It's kind of like when you look at Consecrated Sphinx and you're like, oh, it's the whole thing. And then yeah. you look real close, like, no, its face is actually this tiny little thing in the middle. Yeah. That's what it actually is. All right. Uh, one more card above $5. We've already done really well here, right? There's a, basically a $10 card, a $12 card, and a $22 card. And they're card. all very playable, too. Yeah, they're sweet cards. Uh, the last one is a little more niche, a little more, you know, fairies only, but it's Scion of Una. Two and a blue for a 1-1 one, one fairy soldier f with flash and flying and says other fairy creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Nice. And other fairies you control have Shroud. Wow, this is so good in this deck for both of the commanders. It has Flash for Alayla, and it just has another Lord effect. That Flash Shroud is brutal, too, I because will. it counters a removal spell or something, so they're finally oh, like, right. oh, yeah, I'm kill going to thing. kill your thing. You're like, oh, I'll just flash this in. Now, it, it can be annoying because you can't equip things and things like that at sure. that point, but this deck is not going to have a lot of that type of stuff going on. So Yeah, and giving everything Shroud, we're talking like asceticism yeah. levels of powerful here. So Yeah, very good. And that was a $6 card, I forgot to say. Yeah before uh, we announced the reprint just now, in which case it just, just a few seconds ago, it went down in price. Oh, nice. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Yeah, that's crazy how that works. Not because of us, but because it's in the deck, okay? Yeah. All right. We're just the messengers. Okay, so we are going to, next up, the, the we've had this requested a lot, actually, just to read out the entire deck. <laughs> yeah, we did this last time for the first time uh, and had a good response to it. So we are just going to go through every card remaining in the deck we're going to show it on screen. Sometimes maybe they have new art yeah. or something like that. And also people just like to get a good look at it. Of course, as always, the entire deck list will be in the show notes. But before we do this, we actually wanted to pause here because we have 
kind of a sad announcement. To me. There's no other word but sad, right? It's sad. It's yeah. super sad. But it's happy. It's sad. It's like you're trying to, you're like smiling with the bottom part of your mouth, but you're crying up top. Yeah. The, the announcement is that Lady Danger um, is going to be leaving the command zone. Wow. She's, yeah. She's going to be moving on to pursue other opportunities, other projects. And yeah, that's the happy, sad thing. Because we're happy for Lady that she has these exciting other things going on. But of course, it's still sad because she's not going to be day to day a full time part of the command yeah. zone team anymore. Yeah. Coming into the office and seeing Lady and talking and all that stuff is going to be, it's not going to be there anymore. And yeah. also, Lady has just been a huge part of leveling up our production across, oh my gosh, just so many different ways, right? Yeah, she's been here for almost four years. Um, started as an editor. She was editing on the podcast. Oh, right. Yeah. She I does mean, so much now. It's hard to think of a lady as an editor. That's crazy. Yeah. She basically doesn't edit anymore. I mean, of course, she's always been sort of in our content along yeah. the way, but her job behind the scenes has sort of grown. And really, she's allowed us to do things we never could do without her before. Yeah. Oh my gosh, um, yeah. Yeah, so all of just the set design and the set dressing, you can look at episodes of Game Nights before Lady and, and we're just in this room and it looks like this all the time. And you can very easily see, I think Strixhaven's like the first example of it, Game right. Nights for Strixhaven, where- New stuff on the walls. And if you look, there's details. It's tied into the world. It like really brings you more into the set too. Yeah, and that was all Lady going coming up to us and saying, you know, I could do this and I could do that and I know how to do this thing and we could really dress and make it seem like this Game Nights episode takes place in the world of the place all the way. And you can watch that continuum, yeah. that progress, that evolution from that Strixhaven episode all the way up until Lord of the Rings when we are literally like fully not even in the same space. Yeah. You know, building huge tables and chairs and just fully, you know, march of the machine where we've got rocks and we're in another planet. And, you know, that is a, a whole lot of that is tied to Lady and her uh, talent, her abilities, her experience, but also her desire and passion to just continue to push us and the production and everything forward to let's try this. What if yeah. we did that? Yeah, she embodies the spirit of what the Command Zone and Game Nights is all about. And a lot of what happens here in the office is in front of a keyboard. Yeah. And a lot of what Lady brings to the table is what we don't dare to do, which is turn on a drill, blow get torch. a saw, blow torch, yeah. Hammer. <laughs> yeah, carve stuff up, make it look amazing. And it really just makes such a huge difference. And so we can't be thankful enough to all that Lady has contributed to our show in the past four years. Yeah, I think it's easy to say that Lady has leveled up our content many, many times over the years. And and just the, her presence for that amount of time will continue to level up our content yeah, right? for years to come because Absolutely. she has been like a foundational part of like our culture and our way of thinking. So we are sad um, to see Lady go, of course. Uh, we're excited for her new opportunities and we know she's going to do amazing things. Of course. Um, yeah, so we wanted to uh, play a quick montage, a quick uh, little celebratory video that we put together about Lady Danger. Roll it. Please welcome to the stage, hailing from the Golgari Undercity. She's spooky, she's scary, she's often sporting green, hairy. Danger is her middle name, but it's also her last name because that's right, folks. It's Lady Danger! As is custom on your first episode of Game Nights, you must become knighted, thus I dub thee Dame Danger. Arise, Dame Danger. Oh, it is so wonderful to be here. Welcome to Game Nights. Only one may stand. Woof woof, carn dogs. But also, folk synergize. And then I will tap four, and I'm going to play Wedding Ring. I'm going to propose marriage to Lady Danger. I do. Then I'll go to combat, and Lady Danger, you're at the most life. I will swing my Vigilant Elish Norn at you for four. I don't think this is how marriages work. I could be wrong. <laughs> you too, Jack. Come on, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Lady. This is disgusting! You weren't supposed to see that. Are you building a stack stack? <laughs> Wait, so Jimothy abandoned all those kidnapped children? Y'all talking what? about bling this? <laughs> oh no! They know I'm eating the forbidden black rice! I can't go back to prison! I gotta go! go, go, go. Get ready to get frogged by the get rug. <laughs> Trigger burning vengeance, which I will deal two damage to you. I suppose I will lose. Good game. Good game. Good game, Good everybody. Game. Good game. Good game. No! Why? I was so close. 
Posty, you got any tricks up your sleeve? Death. <laughs> GG, ladies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, what a game. Yay. Bop, bop. So then I turn everything sideways and I win the game. I'm so happy too for Lady. She said this was her first win and that's pretty awesome. And I'm very honored to lose to such a beautiful person. Okay, wow, so many good times. Yes, amazing times. And it's not like Lady's going away forever. That's but, true, that's true. <laughs> she's still a human being that is alive and living in the same city as us. Yeah, living not too far away. <laughs> it's probably going to be a little like Ashlyn, where yeah. she's yeah, yeah. still around. Um, she's still going to probably hopefully show up in our content from time to time. Yep. We're still friends. We're going to support each other. Um, but she just won't be here day-to-day uh, -day, full time involved with the content anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and of course, you can also just hit her up on social media to congratulate her, let her know say maybe something that she's done that's impacted you. Uh, yeah, and just follow along with her because she's going to be talking about whatever her next thing is. And, yeah. you know, so all those links will be in the show notes. And of course, Lady wanted to say something to everybody out there. <clears throat> Sorry, getting a little choked up. Uh, um, so, yeah, we're just going to cut to a, a clip here of um, Lady uh, because she wanted to talk to everybody. Hey everybody, it's me, Lady Danger. Uh, I've got some news. Uh, the boys have probably already told you, but I'm going to be leaving the team. I've been here for, gosh, almost four years now, and you all have seen the journey that I've gone on since then, uh, just from the beginning when I was on game nights to what I do now, which is help make all of the craziness that Josh and Jimmy and the team want to make happen on our special projects and on our sets. I'm spreading my wings. I'm going to be going out on my own for now. And I really hope that you will join me and follow me on anything that I do in the future. You can find me online. I'll be streaming again and producing my own content. So if you want to check any of that out, I'd really appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you in some content soon. And finally, I just want to give a big thanks to Jimmy and Josh for taking a huge chance on me in the beginning and allowing me to get creative and weird with all of the insanity that is this company. But uh, I'm really happy with everything I've done and I wish the team the best. So hopefully you continue to love everything that uh, the team's doing and I look forward to watching it with you. Okay. <sighs> That's so sweet. Yeah. Uh, we're going to miss you, lady. We will definitely miss you, lady, and uh, hope we hang out soon, play some magic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, appreciate sure she's still going to be in our playgroup, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, lady, you can no longer play magic I'm with us. I'm still going to get guarded out from time to time. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. yeah, her new She Love deck. Um, All right, okay, okay, let's move on here. We are going to now go through the full deck list uh, that's remaining that we haven't talked about. Every single card, we will show them on screen. Again, if you don't want to sit through all that, you can easily just find the link in the show notes, mm -hmm. click on it, and there will take you to a web page that will have the full deck list. Okay. Okay, let's go. Here we go. Alphabetical? Yeah, yeah, why not? Okay. Uh, alternating? Or we just do random and see what happens. No, no point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Alternating, alphabetical, ahoy. I don't know. I was trying to find one A word that meant let's yeah, go. It's good copy. Yeah. Arriba. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that Okay. All right. First, vamos. Up we have vamos. Arcane Denial. Classic counterspell in Magic. Especially Commander. Yep. Arcane Signet. Oh, yeah. Classic Signet. <laughs> Bajuka Bog. Gotta love that land. Exile in some graveyards. Uh, Brazen Borrower. Yep. Didn't we already talk about this card? Yeah, yeah. As a reprint. Yep. Choked Estuary. These are those show lands. Uh, Cloud of Fairies. Fairies. Yep. Command Tower. Duh. Consider. Consider what? Uh, consider this card is being reprinted in this deck, Jimmy. Uh, very good for Layla. Uh, Dark Water Catacombs, another blue black land. Nice. Uh, an instant speed spell for the instant matter stuff. Dig Through Time. Oh, it's just a great card. Yep. Demir Aqueduct. I'm getting all the lands here. This is the bounce land. Yep. Demir Signet. I'm getting all the signets here. Mm. This is a signet. Distant Melody. Coming from uh, far away. Yeah. Drake, Drake card draw spell. I, I like card draw. Yeah. yeah. If you like fairies and card draw, Distant Melody it is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've got a land here. It's Exotic Orchard. Ah, good one. Um, next up, Fact or Fiction. Again, great instant speed draw card spell. All purpose, yep. Fairy Conclave is the next one. 
then followed by fairy formation. We How many fairy cards are we going to do? We might have a lot of cards that have the word fairy on them in uh. the fairy deck. <laughs> Actually, we've only got one more. I yeah. lied. <laughs> <laughs> well, there could be the second word or something, too. <laughs> it is. The next one is fairy seer. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. And then felwar stone, not fa- fairy stone. Could have been. Yeah. <laughs> the next is frantic search. Oh, great Oh, card. that's really good with uh, instant speed payoffs, right? Because oh, it's an instant right. speed card that will trigger the instant speed payoff, but untap your lands. Untap. Ready to cast going. another instant. Yep. Uh, or hold up mana for Glenelendra Archmage. Okay. Bummer from Glenelendra because <laughs> Glenelendra Liege. The Liege from Glenelendra is the next card. Not twins, named the same. Halo Forager is a great card. It, like it's the one blue black. You can reanimate a spell from yep. any graveyard. Like oh my gosh, let's go. The next one is a great card, but it is fairly mean. It's Holebreaker Horror. Yeah. <laughs> card's nuts. Yeah. If somebody gets that out on you and you're not dead, you have to kill that thing. Like, you gotta get kill it. Get it out. Yeah. Get it out of there. You it's will been, lose to it on the next round, I promise. Especially in the deck with 30 instants oh, or whatever. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, Hypnotic Sprite, another fairy. Yep. Next is Illusionist Gambit. Very nice. Next up, Keep Watch. After that is Kindred Dominance, which we already talked about. And then we have Midnight Clock, a blue mana rock. Underrated that card as yeah, well. Yeah, really quite good. good. Yeah. Uh, Myriad Landscape is next up. And then Mindstone Classic. Uh, oh, yeah, I skipped it. Sorry, we were out of uh, alphabetical. <laughs> one, one. Thanks okay. for saving me, Jimmy. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> uh, then it's Nightmare Unmaking. Uh, something I wish I could do every night. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Night Veil vale Sprite, another fairy. Uh, then it's Nimrus, Una's Trickster, oh, which goes very well with Layla. And Una, Queen of the Fae. Which goes what? very well with mana. Yeah, one of the first decks I lost to against Craig Blanchett was his Una deck. Very I remember mean. being very frightened of Craig's Una deck for like the first year I played Commander. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. I was like, wow, you can do what? That seems... Really? Yeah. That's how that works? <laughs> uh, the next card up is Opt. Yep. Cheap Instant. Nice. Path of Ancestry, the next land, great for typal decks. Yep perplexing test is after that yep that's what causes my nightmares <laughs> <laughs> and then we have puppeteer click very good card for getting stuff out of the graveyard yeah that's value value after that is quickling value value rankle master of pranks you oh, can just make this boy. a commander this is a mean <clears throat> commander yeah i remember this one from game nights live minneapolis oh that's right yeah well you should remember it you're the one that, i remember yeah. i died to it I was like, there's no way oh rankle <laughs> uh after that is classic blue removal spell reality shift maybe the best blue removal spell definitely one of them uh reckless spite after that then it is Reconnaissance Mission, oh, a little more card drop. Yeah. Yeah. And then Reflections of Lit Yara from oh, Aldheim. Yeah. This card is real good in this deck. Good pronunciation as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Repulse is next. Nice, I like that. Oh, an, an original uh, Eldrain card, Run Away Together. Yeah, this is another underrated card, I believe. Yeah, it's a fun one. You can often find a spot to get full value out of it. Yep. Scion of Una one is of here. Yep. yep, this is one we already talked about. Secluded Glen. I think this was uh, Glenn Jones' uh, Twitter <laughs> handle for a long yeah, time. Yeah, it was actually. That's yeah. right. Which is funny because right after this is the name of the game he currently works on, Snap. That's right. That's really funny. <laughs> I got to see Glenn at Magic Con Barcelona and we had a great talk. It was really nice catching up. Yeah, Glenn One was of the oldest a friends of the show. Time, yeah, he was a Masters of Modern and podcast, podcast co-host. co-host. He was a long time game designer at Wizards and now he's moved on to Marvel Snap. But we were talking about the card Snap. Yeah, which, which is also, I think, underrated. Yeah. In t- Untaps Lands and stuff too. Oh, it's, it's great. really good. Yep. Uh, Soul Ring up next. Uh, the card's a little o- underrated. I think. <laughs> Almost said overrated. Yeah. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> uh, Sower of Temptation is oh, next. Yeah. The Jimmy Wong favorite here. Love this card. Yep. Uh, Sunken Hollow. Good land. Tainted Isle. Another... And this deck, it's actually a good land, yeah. Yeah. Talisman of Dominance. Uh, another Talisman. It's just one taps, hurts you, but yep. adds mana. Temple of Deceit, the Demir Temple. Scryland. Temple of the False God. Uh, taps for two colorless. You know what? I think Wait, temp- for you lands. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you <laughs> you know go. what? I think Temple is an underrated card, but it also is a card that is easy to misuse, and a lot of people put in decks that shouldn't be in. But if you have 39 lands in your deck... I would put a temple in there. But if you take three lands out of this deck, one of them should be Temple of the False God. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, The next card is Theoretical Duplication. I like that. Yep. Um, Thrilling Encore next. Uh, This is another Jimmy Wong favorite. Yeah, it's a great card. You've gotten me with that quite a few times. It's a sweet one. Yeah. When when somebody successfully pulls that off, you're like, oh, crap. Yeah, it was a Thrilling Encore. (laughs) Uh, And then Wayfarer's Bobble, the classic. Yeah. I'm glad that they finally reprinted this card like 17 times. And it finally is holding its low value, which is good. It feels like it should go in any deck that wants it yep no, and then cards. 13 islands 12 swamps that's a lot 13 islands 12 swamps that's a lot of basic lands probably doesn't need that many you're yeah. probably cutting two basics and a temple of the false god and putting in three cards yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that's my guess okay let's talk about initial impressions of the deck 
What are your impressions of the deck overall, Jimmy? I mean, I think it's really powerful. The fact that it has a three mana commander that draws you cards is just by itself very good. Yeah. Now you all have some <clears throat> restrictions because you're just in a fairies deck, but fairies is like one of the most supported themes in Magic. There are so many cards like Sign of Una and Brazen Borrower, Glenelendra that are, you know, you would play Brazen Borrower and Glenelendra in non-fairy decks. Yeah. So that's a great sign for a fairy deck to have both of them in there. Yeah, and looking at the deck, it does seem like they've got most of the bases covered as far as the main cards that go in fairy deck. There's yeah. obviously a few things you're still going to want to look for and add, but it feels like out of the box, this is going to be quite strong. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a fun one to pick up, especially if like someone's trying to get into the game. Having just a tribal deck mm -hmm. is very easy for people to pick up, I think. Yeah. Okay. To Ooh. the listeners, what do you think about this deck? Are you excited about it? What new cards slot in perfectly to your existing commander decks that oh, you're yeah. going to take out of this one? Are you going to use that misleading signpost anywhere? Or Shadow Puppeteers. That's kind of sweet. Blue yeah. does not have a crater hoof, and this gets kind of close to it. Pretty cool. Okay, we'd love to hear from you on Twitter, in the comments, anything at all. And of course, if you want to order, or I suppose pre-order, yeah. this deck, the other pre-con deck from Wilds of Eldraine, any draft boosters, set boosters, collector boosters, cardkingdom.com slash command is the best place to go to order your magic products singles anything at all your magic player you're gonna buy magic cards you may as well support the content you enjoy while you do it and order from a great place like card kingdom who has awesome customer service and is a huge magic retailer yeah. which means when you add a lot of things to your cart individual cards or whatever it all arrives on your doorstep at the same time in one convenient package so cardkingdom.com slash command that's the place we recommend the most once you get those cards sleeve them up put them in the deck boxes figure out a way to protect them and make them look good at ultrapro.com slash command or buy ultra pro product from your local game store of course maybe you want to theme this out around the fairies you can buy the fairy art sleeves or maybe mm. you want to get a binder that's helped support your new burgeoning fairy collection that's right whatever you need ultrapro.com slash command has it also if you're like a sports card player and collector there's tons of stuff for you there as well i guarantee you and i say this every time when you go to that website you will find something that you're like huh I think I need this. Yep. Uh, but yeah, ultrapro.com slash command uh, helps support the show as well as get some great deals on products that you're definitely going to want to help up your collection. Okay. Now it's time for the end step where we talk about something cool outside the world of magic. I have something that's not cool. It's a what? <laughs> that's, that's the whole point though. It's, a, yeah. it's a something cool. It's not cool. This Is it be, cold? Can this be something we just want to put a spotlight on? Oh, sure, sure. So you've probably heard, but there was that big fire in Hawaii. Yes, actually, this is a great thing to put a spotlight on. And it's the opposite of cool. It is not good. Yeah. Um, I'm Hawaiian, obviously. I have family on Maui, and, you know, I grew up, you know. Pretty close to the Lanai, right? Well, I, I grew up in Oregon, but we would visit Hawaii a lot because I have a lot of family there. Yeah. And so I've been to Maui many times. And, in fact, my cousin um, owns Ululani Shave Ice, which is a big shave ice place that's oh, yeah, very yeah. famous, that burned down in the fire in Lahaina. Ugh. And, you know, I used to play on the banyan tree that burned down in the fire. And you can look at the pictures, which I'm sure we're showing them to you now, which is, you know, there was people that died in the fire. It's devastating. Yeah. And it was just, it just went up like a match. I mean, it was so quick. People were diving into the ocean to try and get away yeah, from it. Yeah, their cars. They had to get out of their cars and jump, jump into the ocean. It was that fast. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, obviously it's super sad and, um, you know, it's a, you know, it's a disaster, but I just want to shine a light on it and we'll put some links in the show notes for the various GoFundMes and things if you wouldn't want it to help out mm -hmm. and donate. Because obviously there's a lot of people you know, that don't have homes, that lost loved ones and, and businesses and things like that. Um, so if you are in any way able to, um, you know, I think it'd be great if you could help out uh, the people of, of Hawaii, Maui and Lahaina. Yeah, and it's not just monetary as well. There's food banks that need stuff. There's people that just need clothing, blankets, yeah. shelter, right? And so there's a lot of different ways to help out. Um, and these types of disasters, I think we hear about it a lot when it happens and you don't think about it afterwards, but it is going to be an ongoing thing for all the people that have been displaced to rebuild and to get sort of lives back to normal. And it's going to take months, years. So your support really does matter in, yeah. in these cases. Yeah, and it's an island, so it is difficult to get materials and resources yes, there. So they, they need all the help they can get. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, big thanks to our amazing team here at the Command Zone. Oh, it's going to have one less name in it. Yeah. Damon Lenz, Eric Lem, Megan Yip, Gaurav Galati, Jordan Pridgen, Jamie Block, Arthur Meadowcroft, Manson Lung, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Sam Waldo, Evan Limberger, Craig Blanchett, Mitch Trafford, Gabriel Pozos, Katie Cole, and Rachel Weeks. And of course... One last time, thank you to Lady Danger. Thank you, Lady. We were, we, you will be missed. We wish you the best of luck uh, in all your future endeavors. And we'll see the rest of you around. See you guys. Bye-bye. Peace. Peace. Thank you for your attention. 
For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>